Greetings, all. OK, we have taken advantage of one of the engineering oddities they have here at Arsenal, and I'm going to have a look at this. Streetswagen, Streetswagen, I can never get the damn thing right. FM slash 31 thing. And it is, well, the Wilcombe tracks were a very popular idea in the 1920s. The uh, thinking was you wanted to try to get the best of both worlds. You wanted to have the cross-country ability of a tracked vehicle and the low maintenance requirements and high road speed of a wheeled vehicle. And a number of designs were tried. Some you raised the wheels up and down, some you raised the tracks up or down. Uh, I'm sure there are alternate ideas as well. And of course, there was the Christie idea that you just take the tracks off and run on the road wheels. Probably the most successful of the lot, truth be told. This vehicle is more of an engineering study. It's not complete. It's made of soft steel metal, not armor plate, the gun and mat litter made of wood. So as, as you go around the vehicle also, you see a couple of, they haven't quite finished with this yet moments. But as a pretty good example of the wheel contract concept, uh, I thought it'd be interesting to spend a few minutes having a look at it and not seeing how it works. Other than what appear to be the spare tires, the front of the vehicle is reasonably normal. You have good sloped frontal armor. The driver's hatch simply swings over and outwards. Uh, again, they probably would have come up with a more solid version had the vehicle entered design. Maybe not. Headlights for visibility as you were driving on the road. And of course, at the front, you are going to see your track tension system, which as you can see is a ratchet and pawl system. So if you want to tighten it up, you have the bolt back here that you can never, if you want to loosen it, you got to release the ratchet and you can loosen your track that way. Other than that, and the rather elaborate looking curved horns, tusks, call it the warthog, uh, for your towing hooks, there's not all that much on here. Again, prototype vehicle. The tracks are of a single pin type, and they appear to be kept on by retaining rings that are hammered into place, which means that they don't necessarily seem like they will stay on for very long. And indeed, as I look down, I see as many missing as are present. I also happen to see, as we move to the front, that one of the track pins here is completely sheared off. Uh, not pin, sorry, the saran to the track pin. So I'm not sure I'd be driving this particularly fast anytime soon. When you come around to the side of the idler wheel, I do note that there is a reinforcing bar attached to the hull. So you can see how the idler eccentric arm drops down and that's how you do your tension. But it does look like this reinforcing bar is here so that if you do run into something fairly hard at high speed from the front, it's not going to shear off your idler. The engine powering all this is the Maybach DS08. It's a petrol V12, cranks out about 150 horsepower. And as you can see, it takes up pretty much the entirety of the engine bay towards the top. Uh, this has some advantages and disadvantages. One advantage, air cleaning is really easy because you have a canister on each side pull out to exchange, and of course it draws in air directly through the little holes in the engine deck lid. The downside is that as near as I can tell, to do anything on this vehicle involving maintenance, such as working on the brakes, working on the transmission, working on the steering system, working on the power shaft that goes between the wheels and the rest of the mechanism, yeah, basically, it looks like you've got to pull out the engine to do any of this, which I would argue is a little bit annoying. I hear what I argue. It's very annoying. It might be one of the reasons why the vehicle never entered service, and possibly it's a flaw with most of these wheel come tracks. You can also see very easily the route by way the cooling air is drawn in through this open area in the back here. Radiator fan brings it forward, draws it over the engine, and then out of the radiator at the front. Also, fuel tanks on each side of the vehicle. You can see a filler port at the top. Obviously, you don't have to lift up the entire lid, which is extremely heavy, I should add, in order to access these. There's a little access port. You just open that up and you're good. You can also see that there are little valves, so you can select which fuel tank it is that you wish to draw from. This is where things start getting just a tad complicated. 
So obviously we have the basic running gear, which is more or less identical to the L10. There are four road wheels, each of which are on bogies. You see the leaf springs for the bogies are down on the bottom here. There is also a, we think, a shock absorbing type tension cable, which attaches to a lever which connects with a cross going leaf spring underneath the hull. Not entirely sure why. Then this large leaf spring here is suspension for the road wheels. The road wheels are brought up and down by use of these two shafts here, which we think are screw type. We haven't quite figured this out. There is also another cable you can see going all the way forward and all the way to the rear. Those are the brake cables for the road wheels. There is also steering connections for the road wheels and things just go absolutely insane if you start looking inside the vehicle. So I have decided to enlist some help. Right, so this is my help. This is Stefan, he is the director of Arsenal in, and well, I pose you a guess a bit of a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> this, nobody's asked before, how does this work? Um, not that in detail, and um, we have tried to find any manuals, anything, but so far we have nothing, so this is a pure guess out of what we can see from the inside. And from removing the floor panels, we can figure out how it to might try, try to work. trace the levers. Yeah, and of course, work. you also compared it with the L10 you have in yeah, the back, yeah. which is basically identical except for the lack of the road wheels. Yeah. Okay. So there, there are levers and pedals in this one, which is the same as the other one. And then you have the rest, which is different. Okay, well, let's see what we've got. Yeah. Um, Okay, so here we have the steering wheel, which is the same as in the L10, and that's for the steering of the tracks. So you turn it like this, and then you apply the, the, the steering brake at the back. Um, not really sure what's happening in the back, but this is for the steering. Um, there's the gear shift lever which we think is three speed gear to the right there is a big lever which could be because it's the same in the two tanks it could be high gear low gear and reverse since it's three different positions so that's the only conclusion that we have so far that low range high range and reverse, possible. There is a handbrake for the track and that's also the same in um, the L10. Uh, clutch pedal, brake pedal and accelerator also the same. And besides the steering wheel there is also two sticks tillers for Presumably, the steering of the tracks. But we have no, not so far understood why you have the steering wheel for the track system and you also have the tillers. Could be that in road range you use the steering wheel and if you are supposed to do very narrow turns you use the tillers or maybe they could be for emergency um, and it's very very cramped in the rear under the engine so you cannot see where these levers are going uh, so that's a pure guess that's the steering steering gear shift and possibly high and low range to the left there are two other levers. This one is for connecting and disconnecting the steering wheel from the tracks to the wheels. So if you disconnect from the tracks you go to the steering of the wheels instead. And this is only in this, this one so that's why doesn't need it in the L10. And the other lever 
is also different and probably this is for connecting and disconnecting from tracked to wheeled transmission. Since the, when you're going with the wheels, the tracks are still and opposite. So this probably is for changing from the driving of the tracks to the driving of the wheels as far as we understand. And in front of me there are a few gauges and including a hydraulic pressure gauge which um, is the same in the L10. So you have a hydraulic system as well in both tanks. But we don't know what the hydraulics actually drive. No, we don't really know why it's there since it's in both vehicles. It could be something that's related to the steering with um, the wheel. Um, but that's something that we have to discover when we, are, when we hire some sort of a, a small camera flexible thing to look into or find the, the drawings or whatever. The, is there a disconnect between the front driver and the rear driver? No, I don't think so. Um, when <clears throat> the w steering wheel is turned, it also turns for the rear driver. And uh, the rear driver has the accelerator, the clutch and the brake pedal. But no gear lever. So I think that when, as, when you have reverse in, he's in charge. Um, maybe he could talk to the front driver and make him to shift, uh, possibly. Yeah, we have to the left, there's the clutch pedal in the middle, there's the brake pedal, and to the top, there is a even larger pedal, which we think is the parking brake for the wheels. And the parking brake for the tracks is the lever down here. Um, accelerator and footrest down to the right. And the three levers here with the steering wheel. Connect and disconnect the steering from tracked to wheel steering and this one is presumably for engaging and disengaging the drive for tracks or wheels steering um, sorry gear shift lever and this is what we think is high low and reverse Tra transfer case yeah some sort of it and the two steering tillers could be for emergency or sharp turns. And down here is the mechanism for the steering from the wheel into this and it goes back to the rear driver steering wheel and out to each side of the vehicle for the for the wheels. So here is where you disconnect from uh, wheels to tracks and then that's all it happens. This is the hydraulic pump which is driven from the gearbox and down here there's the mechanism for um, the brakes. I mentioned that the prototype vehicle didn't have absolutely everything sorted out. And one of the minor details I've noticed about the rear driver's position is that he has absolutely no way of looking out. Unless perhaps you open the turret door and spin the turret. So hopefully they had a plan in place for fixing that one. They did put a traverse and elevation mechanism into the system, but as it's a dummy gun, the elevation cog touches absolutely nothing. But the traverse system does traverse the turret ordinarily. 
except it seems to have gotten loose uh, where the cog is attached to the shaft. So is there any conclusion that you can find as to whether or not people thought this was a success? Obviously, they didn't build more of them, but do you know why? Or, I mean, um, specifications say, what, 75 kilometers an hour on yeah, the road? Yeah. Um, as far as I understand for, from what we have read and from what people from that time have said, it was too complicated. Gee, and, I wonder why. <laughs> and probably a bit too expensive to... Uh, to go further with, it could be. Uh, but I think from my own conclusion, at the time in the 1930s, they had solved much of the problems they had with the track system. So they were a lot more reliable. Mm. So this could have been a perfect solution in the 19, early 1920s, where you have track system that was crap and you needed to be able to transport it but at the time it was probably not really worth to have this since you had a better working tracked vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, that's only my personal opinion, so I'm, I'm not really sure if that could be. Um, so obviously what you need to do now is restore this back to running order, so that way you can drive it and then figure out what all the buttons do. That would be really fun. At least we, we need to, to try to find um, any manuals or drawings or whatever to be able to understand it more. There are a few film footage from when they used it, but that doesn't really tell how it works. Uh, and the system for lowering the wheels, lowering and uh, doing that, we think that it's mechanical on the outside, but it could be driven from the hydraulic system on the inside not really sure. And of course it's all underneath the engine. Yeah. Which I guess that will be part of the problem. So if something breaks down with this complicated system, you can't fix it without pulling the engine out. Mm -hmm. A little inconvenient. Yeah, um, there, there is a small hole where you can have a look like this in, inside, but nothing to see on the inside. So it's, it's a bit, it's a challenge. Okay, so they just, stay, they just stuck with the L10 then? Yeah, they made three of them. And I think they were sort of good enough to understand that w this is what we want. And then they went into the L60 instead, uh, a bit more sort of a modern uh, version of, of the L10. Okay, well, yeah. that's, that's a fascinating vehicle. I mean, it's a shame it's, it's not a really complete is. thing, but it's it's really it's, uh, they obviously were on, on something when their designers were thinking. <laughs> yeah, and if, if, if you look at into it today. This could be something that could have been developed today when you have different roles. You want to travel long mm -hmm. and you want to go off-road. Yeah, uh, nobody's doing it. I, I can't no, no, but, but if you, you can see the, the, the idea that you have different roles of, of, uh, of vehicles. But another thing that's quite fascinating with this, as far as we have found documents, is that they wanted to have the same gearbox, same engine, same components in different vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that was thinking Fairly ahead. forward thinking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We try to do that uh, today a lot. But during the years we have had, 60 years, 70 years, we have had different. So they were thinking way ahead. Fair enough. Right, well, there you go. The FM31 will come track. Hope you found it interesting and informative, and we'll see you on the next one. It's a very comfortable vehicle. <laughs> <laughs>